June is Indigenous History Month, and today we are sharing the story of Alison Bear. At the age of 17, she lost an eye in a terrible accident and faced adversity and challenges throughout her early years. Fast forward to today. She's a single mom of two beautiful daughters, a lawyer, and joining us to discuss the realities of living in a modern world while still keeping Indigenous traditions alive. Hey, Allison, we are so happy to have you here, and I know you'd like to start with a land acknowledgement. Yeah, so I would like to acknowledge that right now I am situated within the Treaty 6 territory, which is the traditional lands of the Cree, Anishinaabe, Dakota, Lakota, and Nakota people, and the homeland of the Métis. Allison, it's tough to be in this world now and then be holding tight to Indigenous traditions. So tell me what it means to be an Indigenous woman and mom uh, in today's world. So I'm from White Cap, Dakota First Nation. It's been uh, located in Saskatchewan um, from Dakota on my father's side, but my mom's from Cody First Nation, so I'm Anishinaabe on my mother's side. And, you know, trying to find your identity in this world is uh, really complex, and especially when you're Indigenous, because that's something that was almost, you know, it was taken from us through residential schools, through policies, through Indian Act. And so, you know, a lot of people don't really understand the diverse Indigenous cultures across this country and different tribes and different nations that we have. So today we're working on rebuilding our nations and reclaiming who we are and finding our identity. So the first thing that, you know, I made sure to do with my daughters was to have a naming ceremony. So we have our spirit names and not everybody has those nowadays. Like as Indigenous people, that connects us to the spirit world, which, you know, makes us stronger and allows us to, you know, face adversities. When I was a young girl, my great grandma Sarah told me, you know, you you always pray to your, your spirit name and that will watch over and guide you. And But a lot of us don't have our spirit names because a lot of us lost ceremony because ceremony was outlawed for such a long time um, by the Indian Act that we weren't able to actually practice our ceremony and have our spirit names and have that connection. So the first thing I did for my daughters was do that for them when they were babies. And, you know, I, I try to take them to ceremony. Um, we dance powwow. We all dance jingle dress. And, you know, I, I, I do my best to, you know, try to make time for that in a very fast-paced world. Allison, one thing I like to do a lot on City Line is um, recognize and acknowledge the trauma, but also really sort of roll around in the joy. So I want to know about the strength you take uh, from being an Indigenous woman and from being a mom. As an Indigenous woman and a mother, you know, like it's, it's about matriarch. So like we... As Indigenous people, we have, uh, women are always leaders in our communities, and this is kind of, we've lost our way with this because of colonization, because of residential schools, because of the imposition of um, colonial laws and patriarchy. Um, indigenous women have always had that, that influence and, and uh, within their communities as mothers, as having that intuition as life givers. And so I think that, you know, being a mother is a, is a whole new force to reckon with. And sometimes, you know, it's frowned upon in this type of society today. You know, it's like, oh, you're a mom. Uh, you know, are you going to be able to handle this job? Are you going to be able to, you know, go to law school with two kids? You know, everybody doubted me along the way. And, you know, and the, but it just made me want to prove them wrong even more. And I think that comes from who I am as an Indigenous, a Dakota Winyan, a Dakota woman. So... I want to talk about more of the, you know, your daughters being a mom. You must take so much pride in them. Can you tell me a little bit about your fears, but also your hopes for your daughters? Yeah, so my girls are seven and five right now. and You know, they're very close in age. But, you know, like, it's, it's really unfortunate that, you know, we basically have to almost live in fear every day. You know, it was only a few years ago where missing and murdered Indigenous women, girls, and two-spirit people has actually become a you know, a topic that people are talking about. And this has been, this has been ongoing since, you know, since settlers have arrived here. It's been like Indigenous women have been targeted because of the power that we've held in our communities. And, you know, and it was, it was foreign to this, uh, uh, this other society. And so nowadays, you know, we kind of have to live in fear because it's well known that, you know, we, uh, we go missing and are murdered at a high, much higher rate than our non-Indigenous, uh, you know, other people in society here. I, I want to talk a, a little bit more about that because do you think that sort of with the world exploding with a racial reckoning last year, do you feel there has been any movement for Indigenous communities um, and any sort of progress in terms of 
folks recognizing and acknowledging the idea of colonialism uh, here where we are? What do you think? Is there any, has the dial moved? I think the dial has moved, but not enough. I think that a lot of people are still saying, oh, that's happening in the United States. That's not Canada. And it's like, no, no, that's definitely happening here. And that's why people, especially during this month, you know, there's so many resources and we have our phones and our hands every day. We're so close to technology that we can look up, you know, information nowadays. And I think this is the type of stuff people should be researching during this month uh, is the fact that, you know, the realities that have, you know, impacted Indigenous peoples and, you know, people of color and Canada and the same struggles that we're still going through today is is still a a reality. It's not that happened a long time ago. It's it's still ongoing. It's a rippling effect effect into, you know, intergenerational. And that's why, you know, I just want the best for my children. I want to break down these stereotypes and these biases, you know, of, of my people and, you know, I want to be able to help rebuild our nations, and and that's why I chose this line of work. Beautiful. Listen, research, education, uh, all of the things we need to be doing in this conversation is all part of that. So, Allison, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your story uh, and your perspective with us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Hopefully we'll be able to have you back and keep the conversation.